Behind me you'll see that wonderful plug that is a pond racer, but I'm not quite working on that at the moment because I got a bit tired of sanding and adding more filler, adding more sanding. Um, it's getting there. I have completed, just so you guys know, I have got a set of moulds for the tail fin. So I've done that and, and I have that mould for the spinner. So we've, we've got some projects on the, on the pond racer. However, I am now going to do a video on how to do a moulded aircraft. Um, so like I have moulds made or starting to be made for the pond racer project. I am uh, also got moulds for a 60 inch slope sawer, which I am going to make for a friend of mine. Um, and I'll run you through the process of how we lay up an aeroplane. So these are my moulds. These moulds I made about 10 years ago, a bit more than 10 years ago um, from scratch. They were pulled off a Chinese model, which was sold by Hobby King, and I wanted to make a stronger layout than what they offered. So I pulled a set of moulds off them so I could make my own. Um, these were done with an epoxy tooling gel coat or tooling coat on the outside. Um, and I experimented with these moulds doing different backings. So this is this tailplane moulds are backed with sand mixed with epoxy with some fiberglass. Um, they're holding up all right. Um, these fuselage moulds were the epoxy tooling coat backed with a mix of epoxy and lumina trihydrate which is basically the makings of Korean um, uh, like bench top Korean kitchen bench tops that you see um, so that makes kind of a solid epoxy backed mold block um, that also worked all right although it doesn't seem to be quite as dimensionally stable there's a slight bow along the length of the fuselage but once you clamp those together um, that bow disappears the wing moulds, however, I did slightly differently again. So I was young and naive and when friends told me that you should use glass beads, what they meant was porava, which is hollow glass beads. So I went and got solid glass beads and these moulds are actually backed with um, some solid glass blasting media. So these moulds came out really freaking heavy, really freaking heavy. Um, I think they're around about 40 kilograms um, for the wing moulds, but that has epoxy mixed with glass beads and some fiberglass as the backing sheet on those. So they're a solid block mould now as well, but they haven't moved a centimetre. They've been nice and stable. Um, I've kept a reasonably good finish. The finish is now starting to disappear a little bit. There's a few scratches on them because um, they've pulled out probably 10 to 12 aeroplanes out of them. Um, if not more, and I've been passed around a few friends to make planes out of too, so uh, They're still working, they're just not quite as good as they used to be So I have just finished adding some mold release. I've used some chem lease on them, and then I've gone over with some wax some mold release wax because If you use the chem lease your paint will tend to fish eye and you end up with horrible little bubbles all over your paint surface. So by using a wax over top of the chem lease and they do not affect each other, um, you actually create a bit more surface tension and enable this paint here behind me to stick to the mold surface and not fish eye so much. Um, of course it will still release from the part because it is a wax, but it will not um, uh, fish eye up and bubble up. So I'm currently waiting for my last coat of wax. I've done two layers of chem lease and it's a chemical semi-permanent release agent. And now I've done two layers, just finished the second layer of um, wax. So I'm waiting for that to harden off before I start adding some masking. I have a bit of a template cut out for the name, to mask on the wing. And once I've masked up a pattern, I'm gonna start painting. The new exciting thing for my workshop is I add getting a a spray booth, I'll say uh, spray booth, because it is actually a grow tent for hydroponics in, at home. So for growing, uh, who knows what, uh, tomatoes, whatever you wanna grow inside your house, you can have this um, kind of grow tent, which actually has extraction ports in it, as well as a nice reflective surface, which is easy to clean inside. So I'm gonna turn that into a spray booth um, and have the, ex the appropriate extraction going through it. 
um, because that's better than using my bare workshop and getting paint everywhere. Um, so that's going to be exciting. That I'm hoping to set up this weekend, which will allow me to get back into some more spray painting and sanding uh, over the winter. So I'll have to keep that little um, cubby hole warm a bit easier than pouring shit tons of power from the heat pump to heat the entire garage. Um, so hopefully after that is set up and this little project's done, we will see some more pond racer project uh, progress. Because I'm po apologies, there hasn't been much progress on that, but we'll get there.